Unfortunately, after his 55 points over the nation's capital, albeit in another 30-point triple-double, Giannis just turned the ball over 12 times against my Raptors. However, Adetokounmpo is now the first player since fellow Buck Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to drop at least 250 points, snag at least 80 rebounds, and dish out at least 30 assists over a five-game span. Despite the Bucks faltering a 21-point lead in the final three minutes to a scrappy young Toronto team who you have to give credit to, the overtime W for Milwaukee saw Adetokounmpo and Lopez post 40 rebounds, plus the backcourt of Javon Carter slash Grayson Allen score 31. Bobby Portis dropped his NBA fourth most 23rd double-double. Bobby combined with rookies Marjon Beauchamp and AJ Green plus third-year pro Jordan Wara to post a crucial 34 points off the bench. That said, despite the fact that they've been missing both Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton, it's a bit complicated as to why the partially living up to expectations 2023 Bucks recently lost four straight to Cleveland, Brooklyn, Boston, and Chicago. For the most part, we'll look at Giannis's godly domination, and then we'll touch on the heart and soul of this team in Bobby Portis, but from a team perspective, why are the Bucks so tough to gauge? We'll get right to that, but just 13.2% of you watching are subscribed right now, so please subscribe and leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. So, I know the Bucks' identity centers around their defensive-minded approach, which has resulted in the third-best defensive efficiency in all of basketball, only behind the Cleveland Cavaliers and Memphis Grizzlies. Milwaukee's 2021 championship a year and a half ago largely revolved around that defensive identity, fueled by four all-NBA caliber stoppers in Drew, Chris, Giannis, and Lopez. However, the former half of those two have missed a large chunk of time this year. Of course, Middleton missed all of last year, yet it's been the NBA best and quite frankly, underrated backside presence plus overall rim-protecting force that Brooke Lopez has continued to be this year, which has made up for two of this team's top defensive stoppers in Drew and Chris being out. With that said, what makes the Milwaukee Bucks most complicated is the fact that, despite that aforementioned dominant defensive clip, they rank all the way down at number 26 in terms of their offensive efficiency. Now a lot of that comes down to Holiday and Middleton having combined to miss a large chunk of games, and therefore Budenholzer's system not having the adequate amount of playing time to find the proper flow. Considering the landscape of the NBA has shifted so drastically since Milwaukee's glory run to the 2021 championship, and also taking in how long Middleton's been out of the equation, it's frustratingly impossible to predict either the outcome of this Bucks season or generally even this team's ceiling in terms of how good they can be. For one man, however, there's no denying how good he can be, that being the Greek freaky and alphabet what? Giannis Sina Yugo Adetokounmpo, who's coming off a historic stretch. That said, complicatedly in the midst of that beastly rip-through of the association, running into the aggressive scheming of Toronto Raptors head coach Nick Nurse on Wednesday night, Giannis committed the third most amount of single-game turnovers in the history of the NBA. Adetokounmpo's 12 turnovers committed tied James Harden's mark on November 23rd of 2016 for the third most ever Ever, only trailing Jason Kidd and Chris Mullen. While you can expect teams to watch film on how the Raptors turned Giannis over so many times, that said, generally speaking, Adetokounmpo's playmaking this year has been an improved aspect of his repertoire. This transition take sees him survey the defense with his body language baiting drive and eye contact baiting kickout, getting OG Pascal and the trailing Barnes to think he's either going to Euro step through the lane or collapse the defense for the corner kickout. Instead, while looking right, he releases a one-handed bullet to the paint directly before leaving the ground, fooling Ananobi and Siakam to set up Lopez for the two-handed flush. That ability to see over the top of the defense at 6'11 helps him so damn much, as this over-the-shoulder one-handed hockey assist to the weak side through the hands of Trent Jr. gets Connaughton the open look. After the Raps tied it in OT, Giannis is going to come off this high screen and roll with Lopez, put his head down in the lane, and start his two-step to the basket, drawing all five Raptor defenders who inconveniently sandwich him, and while falling over, Giannis somehow finds room to skirt around Barnes and whip a 100 mile per hour dime to the right corner. That sealed the deal for Milwaukee, north of the border. In terms of what the Freak does best at a mind-bogglingly entertaining frequency, that's his adaptability to rebound the basketball, defend the paint, plus create offense with his overpowering all-time great slashing, all at an elite level. Combine that with the former 15th overall draft robbery's vamped IQ in pro campaign number 10, and he's now able to recognize defensive game plans and gauge the situation effectively. 
Watch how he pauses to read Toronto's defensive setup in the far backcourt right here, noticing the Raptors aren't communicating and seem lackadaisical before he offhanded dribbles, simply crosses right, pushes it ahead to himself to gain hefty ground coverage left, nifty momentum crosses back the other way to gain even more traction, then he outmuscles Ananobi and hangs past Scotty Barnes. Now in the half court, he's gonna stately cross left with that patented shifty momentum, burst into the lane like a deer in the headlights, hezzy dribble and euro step back to his strong hand, that's just nasty. The basis of Adetokounmpo's bucket getting prowess, if you will, comes down to how he's mixing in forcefully blistering downhill ravages to the cup with nice little pull-up mid-rangers that have evidently displayed a polished trigger and general sense of comfortability. The occasional deep-range bomb to space things out and get defenders scratching their heads are also mixed in from Giannis. In terms of the dirty work, Ananobi's the NBA's steals leader, an elite wing in his own right, OG's gonna snag this rebound 95% of the time as he sneaks up on the weak side, especially because Giannis is a tad slow to box out, but watch the strength, timing, and most notably beastly hands from Adetokounmpo to fend off OG for this board in traffic. Second in rebounding just behind Domas, Giannis is also tops by far among power forwards in defensive rating. The gap between the number one ranked GA in that area and his number two ranked teammate Bobby Portis is a bigger gap between the number two ranked Portis and the number seven ranked Zion Williamson. Here he shows off why his perimeter clamps are so overwhelming, planting his feet while preparing his body to screen navigate before fundamentally cutting around the Chua on an angle, intentionally trailing OG to bait him into the drive before relentlessly chasing him down for the intimidating stuff off the glass. As I mentioned to start this video, it's truly been a historic stretch from Giannis, who's picking up the slack with Holiday and Middleton being in and out of the lineup all year. That said, the support of someone who I, for some reason, didn't feature in my last Bucks video, Bobby Portis, is consistently available. Bobby's rebounding fortitude, ability to score in the post from two levels, and high IQ decision making slash three point pick and pop floor spacing makes him one of the most underrated bigs this game has to offer. Apologies to BP for not mentioning him in my last Bucks vid, but a film room breakdown on the smoothness in Bob's game is definitely something that can be covered in a future Bucks vid. I also have a lot more Giannis footage to look at. In the Toronto win for Milwaukee, Marjan Beauchamp was exceptional off the bench as the product of Yakima Valley's mix of energy and athleticism makes him tough to hold in check not just in terms of when you're face guarding him trying to shut him down, but for other wings on the glass, the youthful springiness of Beauchamp is just a damn problem. But here's what makes the Bucks so damn complicated to predict, the health of Chris Middleton. Drew Holiday is currently out with a non-COVID illness and has now missed 13 games total with various setbacks approaching the midway point. Also, following his long-awaited debut, Chris Middleton's missed the last 10 games. This may be a random comparison, but we saw how a lack of reps hurt the Nets' big three of Durant, Harden, and Kyrie back in 2021, or even how a lack of reps hurt just Irving and Durant in 2022 for Brooklyn. They didn't make it past the second round in either of those years. If the Bucks' big three wants the success it achieved in 2021, they're going to need to get healthy and gain a rhythm fast. The amount of contenders there are this year is insane, so because of that, naturally, a lot of top teams are ahead of Milwaukee in terms of rhythm. On a positive note, rounding things out, it helps when you have Serge Ibaka. I, I take it. You save him. You save him. You save him. You got the chef. You got the artist. You're a role player, a rebounder, a screen setter. That's what you are. Bye. In all seriousness, it helps to have a reliable playoff experience veteran like former Toronto Raptor Mafuzi Chef. Serge Ibaka's camaraderie and toughness provides a mix of leadership and enforcership. At full strength with the big four of Holiday, Middleton, Lopez, and Adeta Kumpo, the Bucks have as good a shot as any team to go the distance. But it's those second and third words I used in that last sentence being full strength which legitimately make this Bucks team so damn complicated. But what makes the Bucks so damn tough to predict in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments. Guess next video shout out. Top five commenters by March 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's shout out goes to FYI Sin, who says, I'm not worried about Jordan Poole's turnovers at all, but also it's a weakness that he has to work on if he's going to be the next star of the Warriors. He has to carry so much of the dubs offense while Wiggs and Curry are out, and he's still young and still has time to develop that problem. 
And if both Curry and Wiggs come back, he's probably coming off the bench and he's going to have Dante and Kaminga and all the shooters off the bench to take the load off him. So give him a little time. Great take from FYI. And yeah, Warriors fans are going to hate on Poole, especially after that TO down the stretch against Detroit. But Jordan was good defensively in the fourth quarter of that game. And he's still learning his role without Curry. Anyways, thanks for watching.